Um, I want to show you another way that you can sort of assess your, your, your coding, um, and that is through the code map, which is another tool we have in the system. So I'm going to bring up a code map that I've got here. And a code map is just a, a diagramming tool. Excuse me a moment. It's just a diagramming tool that um, lets me sort of set up and illustrate code relationships. So I've created a, a couple ones from here. I have, um, I have one where I've got my two codes on making a high salary and fabulous non-traditional job that were um, part of my original theory, hypothesis. Um, and I've added a number of other codes that I, I consider from out of my code book here to be codes that are related to a high work commitment. Uh, and I've sort of drawn some, some preliminary relationships for my own thinking. Uh, for example, if they have a fabulous non-traditional job, well, that's probably related to them making a high salary. You could have a fabulous job that you enjoy that doesn't pay very well, um, but when a lot of people, a majority of people, think of fabulous uh, non-traditional jobs, it usually thinks of some comfortable, maybe not fabulously rich, but comfortable level of income associated with them. If you're making a high salary, that might be related to that they have no financial problems, um, if they're in a non-traditional field, well, you know, that's, that's a subset of, you know, or fabulous non-traditional job is a subset of being in a non-traditional field. Um, uh, so I've connected a few of these together that I think probably have some relationships associated with them. Um, uh, and then I've got some others that they work in a traditional field that were, again, these sort of organic from the ground up, uh, grounded theory codes that I, uh, that I uh, came up with. Um, that sort of I, I don't have any particular relationship with. You can do some interesting things in the code map here, like I can, um, I can come in here and I can say resize these relative to frequencies, and it shows me a count of how many currents. I see this code, I'm making a high salary five times throughout my study. I see fabulous non-traditional job four times throughout the study, great job non three times, etc. These other codes lesser, right? Um, maybe, you know, these codes really didn't apply or they're just single instances outliers. So I can, I can see some frequency information right in here while I'm looking at the relationships. Of course, if you recall, I can also, over under reports, get a frequency report on my codes that, you know, and I'll just remind people what it looks like here, that is very much, you know, the frequency of occurrence of codes in my study. So this is another kind of quick way to sort of uh, see the significance of codes while I'm looking at a potential relationship. I can also do interesting things in here like if, if I, you can diagram anything in the diagramming tool. You can put in background images. You can add memos. You know, I can insert uh, uh, a new memo, which is just a text field on the diagram I can type notes into. Um, uh, I can, again, place, uh, place a background image, uh, you know, behind it so I can layer this on top to illustrate something if I'm looking to do that. So there's a lot of versatility in here. I can create relationships fairly easy if I click on something and I click the linking tool and I just click on another item, I've created a link between there. If I want to get rid of that link, I can just click on it and hit the delete button. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the the sort of features of the code mapping tool that you can do. Um, I just wanted to show that you can sort of illustrate a relationship. Something else you can do in here is I can sit there and say, so I'm kind of interested in, you know, this no people who are in non-traditional fields, and, and I've got some codes that I've connected to it. Uh, I can actually select codes. I can come up here, oops, excuse me, uh, clicking on the wrong spot. I can come up here and I can select um, all the nodes that are so many connections away, if the depth of the connections has some meaning. It doesn't really in this example, but I, I just wanted to show the thing. So if I, if I say one, it only gets the, the two codes, non-traditional job and great turn on 
great re uh, job on non-traditional, return non-traditional, that are immediately connected to this. If I unselect everything and, and pick this again, and I go and I say select connected, and I want to get everything that's two hops away, well, now it's got me the ones that are immediately adjacent and the ones that are one hop further past that, which are these two up here. So uh, that's a useful tool. I can then uh, mark those that um, uh, I've selected. And then if I'm back over here, I showed you code filtering by name where I filtered on those that, that code potential successful life. I can come in here and do code filter by map, and it will filter my codes to just the ones that are marked on my current map. So uh, I can see here in case eight, I have the making a high salary, Let's slide this over a little, and non-traditional field. Um, I, I don't have any of these other uh, three codes out of the five that I was selected. You can always unfilter that by going back to all codes. Um, it's, again, it's, a, it's another way if you, if you like diagramming or visualizing how your codes are, either hierarchically or, or in some kind of network model, you can set up any number of these code maps to illustrate that. You can do code filtering based upon that as well. I have one that has my high family codes in here, one for my Cinderella complex codes. Again, just a way that I can play with and look at, you know, how are these codes potentially um, related or, or not. Uh, obviously, if you have a lot of work-family conflict um, and you can't combine it, you know, without, you know, with, with little or no problems, it's probably not going to be as happy as you, as you could be. So to me, there's a connection between those two. Um, so I, I wanted to illustrate the code map. Uh, as a way of selection, uh, I've shown you, again, uh, brief introductions to the hypothesis tester, the cycle of then using uh, either the code map to look at the relationship between your codes to explore code consolidation using the recode, rename uh, functions either at the codebook level or on the individual codes on case. I've shown you how to use um, uh, search text source and auto coding to both uh, just sit there and review cursory searches through your content or to actually turn that into codes that you can then filter on and review um, and how to reiterate. We're, we're down to uh, a little less than 10 minutes left. Um, I'd like to sit there and uh, open it up for any questions that anyone may have. I know I've covered a, a lot of material fairly quickly. Um, and I want to thank everybody who has come to our webinar today. We had another large crew in attendance, um, and your interest is very much appreciated. Uh, again, don't feel shy. If you have questions, feel free to type them into chat. They're anonymous, you know, um, so um, uh, no question is a, is a poor question. Um, there anything, any particular other areas, people, if it's not on the materials I covered, if there was other hyper-research related questions people had in the back of their minds, I'd be happy to entertain them as well. Uh, oh, uh, I've been asked to illustrate um, uh, the fact that in the code map, um, you can to actually show you that sort of feature where I can place a new memo and in here I could put an annotation such as my thoughts are that uh, um, you know uh, conflict in the uh, or conflict between work and family uh, equals not happy you know, which is why I created the relationship between these two things. So I can put that in there. I can move that around as a little note uh, on my map that I create um, uh, as a way of keeping sort of memos within there. Um, and in earlier ones, you know, we've showed people how to create code annotations. Um, uh, if you want to annotate individual codes just as a, as a refresher, 
if I have uh, this code here uh, making a high salary uh, where they, uh, or let me go to case one, uh, this is a specific one where they talk about making a six-figure salary and I want to add an annotation there, I can just click in here and say a uh, six-figure salary seems indicative of making a high salary or financial success. Um, and again, that's as, that's, it's as easy as that to add annotations. It puts a little mark next to it. Uh, you can retrieve those annotations in reporting that you do. Um, uh, if there's no further questions, I would like to thank everyone for attending our Hyper Research Intermediate. I hope this has uh, been illustrative of how you can apply Hyper Research iteratively to really, you know, whip through your data and find out are there answers to your research question there? Is the evidence supporting it? Um, uh, whether you're working from a bottom grounded up model or top down or a mixture of the two or whatever your methodological approach may be. Again, thank you everybody for uh, attending. I'll, I'll